and flaws level three. Similar to opening permissions to everyone, people accidentally open permissions to any authenticated AWS user. They might mistakenly think that this will only be users of their account when in fact it means everyone that has an AWS account. Open permissions for authenticated AWS user on Shopify. Let's look. I like how it connects it to HackerOne so we can see this in the real world. Some of Shopify's Amazon S3 buckets were inadvertently left with any authenticated AWS user read or write permissions. Ooh, that's a big deal. Allowing users outside of Shopify to access the buckets. The excess permissions have been removed. So you could write to it. $1,000 bounty. Honestly, they should have paid them more than that. <laughs> that's a big deal if they could write to the bucket. Oh, man. Um, let's see. Lessons learned. Okay. Avoiding the mistake. Only open permissions to specific AWS users. Right there. The screenshot is from the Web Council in 2017. The setting can no longer be set in the Web Council, but the SDK, Software Development Kit, Boto probably Boto 3 is what they mean by that, and third-party tools sometimes allow it. Level 3. The next level is fairly similar with a slight twist. Time to find your first AWS key. I bet you'll find something that will let you list what other buckets are. So do we need to list the bucket again? Let's just try to see if this does anything. Oh, I always include HTTP when I copy and paste. Let's get that out of there. Okay. Oh, we have a dot .git. You really don't want that exposed. Um, I'm curious, so what is robots.txt? Whoops, I did not mean to click that. Oh, just that. So we have dot .git, if I could type. No such key, the specific key does not exist. It does. I remember abusing this um, on both a hack the box machine and a try hack me machine. <clears throat> what is this authenticated users.png? Let's look at this. Just some picture. Oh, that's just a screenshot that he shared. So we have dot .git being publicly exposed. Let me look at. We should be able to bring the git uh, down to our local machine. That's what I tried to do initially. Did I, did I type it wrong? It's very possible. Specified key does not exist. Requested ID, host ID. Oh, did I close our flaws thing? Let's go to our level. The next level is very similar with the slight twist. Time to find your first AWS key. I bet you'll find something that will let you list what other buckets are. I bet you'll find something that will let you list what other buckets are. That's being exposed, right? Do I need to, what if I try AWS S3 um, sync like that profile cloud goat region us east one. Oh shoot that worked okay beautiful now i need to remember the commands for git but we have it on here and now we need to look through the history of git i just don't remember all the syntax for that so we pulled it down from the bucket can we do git status? Let's see, very interesting. Well, if we go to like
There we go. Oops, accidentally added something I shouldn't have from Scott at Summit Route. First commit. Now we need to look into the history of that. The git log command shows a list of all commits. You can see the hash of each git commit, the message associated with each commit, and more metadata. This command's useful to explain the history. Git show ID commit. Git show, and is this ID right here? That would be this one that we want. So we already downloaded the git file. I don't want to see all the hints. Yeah, okay. Maybe this is the one I'm supposed to get show. We're looking at the hands, which you already know those hands, but I don't want to give. Oh, there it is. Look at that. So now if we do AWS configure profile, and we'll just call this, I don't know, Scott. It's going to ask us for our access key right there. We'll drop that in there. And it's going to ask, ask us for our secret access key. Drop that in there. I don't know the default region. And now with that, we just took over an account. And now if we do AWS S3 LS profile Scott region US East one. And look at that. Now with the Scott user, we have access to all of these different buckets. And we are, we see all the different levels. I'm not sure what the end goal is. What are we trying to do? Oh, so then from here, I think it's just like, hey, now you made it to level four. Yeah, there we go. We took some leak keys and we made it to level four. Beautiful. Well, let's read how to our lessons learned, guys, and I'll have to sign off. I got to get ready for a meeting, but really do appreciate you guys hanging out with me today. So lessons learned. People often leak AWS keys and then try to cover up their mistakes without revoking the keys. You should always revoke any AWS keys or any secrets that could have been leaked or were misplaced. Roll your secrets early and often. Examples of this problem. Instagram's million dollar bug. In this first, in this must read post, a bug bounty researcher uncovered a series of flaws, including finding an S3 bucket that had .tar gz archives of various revisions of files. One of these archives contained AWS credits that then allowed the researcher to access all S3 buckets of Instagram. What? RC von Instagram, the bug bounty was ultimately able to access all of Instagram's production data and assets. That is crazy. Story begins when the attacker was tipped off to an internet accessible server. The attacker did not have to take any of the normal recon steps. Normally an attack would need to try to identify subdomains and IP addresses owned by the business. To find subdomains, they can try making a domain transfer request or brute forcing them. Hey, what up, Mr. Amazon? Good to have you here, my friend. The tool's word list doesn't have Sensu as a possible subdomain, nor did other tools I looked at. An attacker's subdomain word list should also contain other likely server names. Okay. So they found the exposed server. The exposed server was running Sensu Admin, which is Admin UI for Sensu. This UI luckily required authentication. This is both good and bad. It's good because the exposed server couldn't be immediately interacted with, but it's bad because this authentication feature only led to RCE. Defenders should try to have a homogeneous attack surface. Okay, unaudited code resulting in unchanged secret token. The attacker was able to use an unchanged secret token. Knowing a server secret token for verifying session cookies like this usually would allow you to impersonate other users, but Rails takes this one step further. 
by enabling RCE as explained here. It is therefore critical that people change the default secret token if they exist in an app. Since your admin now announces itself as being depreciated on its GitHub page and the secret token has been removed from the code base. Interesting. There's 100,000 more repos. Unfettered access, right? Once they got RCE on it, then they could have enumerated it. Oh, they hit a honeypot. Poor secret management. Okay, I'm going to come back and read, read through that. That actually sounds really interesting. Avoiding this mistake. Always roll your secrets if you suspect they were compromised or made public or stored or shared incorrectly. Roll early. Roll often. Rolling secrets means that you revoke the keys, i.e. delete them from the AWS account and generate new ones. For the next level, you need to get access to the web page running on an EC2 at there. It's useful to know that a snapshot was made of the EC2 shortly after Nginx was set up on it. Okay. I'm going to have to pause here. I'm going to grab this, though. Go to Flaws Cloud. Just add to my running notes there. We made it to level four. So we completed all of Flaws 2. Then we went to OG Flaws, and we made it to level four. Um, fun stuff, guys. I learned some stuff. Hopefully, you learned some things as well. Flaws 1, this first Flaws, is a lot easier than the second Flaws that we initially uh, dug into. But either way, our goal is to learn, and I learned something. Hopefully, you did as well. Thank you guys for hanging out with me uh, this afternoon. I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.